Hello my dear gardening friends! This video is dedicated to my favorite topic. How to make space bigger, wider, deeper. And we are talking about gardens, especially gardens which are smallish or on a small size. I garden in Zone 67 Coastal Connecticut and the back of my garden is very shallow. For the last 10 years I was trying to make this space visually bigger. The second subtopic of this video would be how to make your garden more interesting, more engaging, that you would want to come outside and enjoy the green space outside your house. There are legitimate rules and principles which we can use to manipulate space. Uh, I'm sure, oh, look at this butterfly. He came to check my butterfly bush. And by the way, my butterfly bush just started blossoming and butterflies started to discover it. Look at this little fellow. Hello, hello, oh. All right, back to spaces which we want to make bigger. So uh, it's not a surprise that all of us, majority of us know that uh, colors influence the size of the object and there are certain principles which we can use in the design of our garden to change the perception of space, to manipulate space, to make space feel deeper, wider and bigger. And for gardeners who garden on a bigger size lots, this topic probably wouldn't be an important topic unless you want to hang out with me in my garden but for gardeners who garden on smallish lot they do want that space to be visually bigger and the edges of the property kind of uh, uh, disappear into the properties of the neighbors without a clear division so the first principle about which I want to talk would be a well-developed uh, approach to garden design uh, it is the principle of garden rule, rule, rooms. I'm sorry, my mouse is full of marbles. The principle of garden rooms. So basically this approach to garden design would be the same as we have in the house. So what do we have in the house? We have the living room, the kitchen, dining room, bedroom, and all those rooms have clear divisions between them and they have clear character to them. So when you walk into the room, right away you know what it is. You walk into the bedroom, you see bed, you know it's bedroom. So the same approach applies to garden rooms. And you, must, you might say, Olga, you have a small garden. How can you fit different rooms in a small space? Well, I'm going to show you. I have several rooms with clear uh, borders between those rooms, clearly defined entrances and exits. And those rooms, believe it or not, make space bigger. For example, on the side of my garden, um, I have the space between uh, us and our neighbor. It's kind of narrow and uh, that space is very short, but I managed to divide that space in two different rooms. And the first room I would call, it's like a quiet reading room. My husband likes to sit there at the end of the day and read his newspaper. And the second room, I call that room as a little transition room, like a woodland area. So come along and I will show you, break down the composition of those rooms and you will understand what I'm talking about. This is the entrance into my so-called quiet, my husband's reading room. So clearly the entrance to my little room here is well defined with this uh, arch which I built, which is unfortunately falling apart, but what can you do? So uh, the entrance is also defined by two boxwoods, which are growing on both sides and they will reach some sort of a, a ball shaped maturity here. So you will clearly see, if you come through this entrance, you will see that you are entering into something different from my backyard. A lot of interesting details make space look bigger. Because our attention is spent on looking at all these details, we perceive space as much bigger than it is. You know, sometimes when we go on a road which we never traveled and it feels so much longer and then the next time we go and take the same road, we are thinking, oh my gosh, it's so quick because the first time we spend time looking around, studying new things, looking at the details, and that road is so much 
longer. So the same with space. If this room would be just an empty room, which was, it was before we moved into the house, all this area was covered with, uh, I believe, with stones. And it was used for, as a dog area. So when we came in here, I introduced raised beds. And by the way, the difference in soil level is perceived by our eyes is, is very interesting. So that wall I built, it's a very simple stone wall. So that uh, foundation was raised up. I planted all these plants. And here there is a bunch of different things going on. And this area is a little bit of a mix of everything. On another side, I have my husband's bench. Wonderful, beautiful uh, mm, Rose of Sharon. I replanted it, I believe, last year. So when you come in here, you have a lot of little things for the eye to indulge. Look at this little time sharing space with my pathway here. And I, I watch people when they come in here, they right away, they start looking at this uh, um, handmade path with pebbles and they walk on it, they look at it, they slow down and they slowly make their way to the exit of this little room. Just imagine if this area would be just a plain grass area, people will go in and out quickly. But because there are a lot of little details, it makes this space more engaging, more interesting, as a result, bigger. Now, when we go this way, we will move to a clear exit, which is symbolized by that stone and also the, um, the fence. My, husband, my father came from Ukraine and he helped us build that fence. So that's a nice thing which my father did for us. And when we move closely past our boxwoods, we're entering another area of the garden and I call it a woodland area. So come along and I will show you that area too. So in this woodland area, I am slowing down my visitors by uh, making the path not straight. So as you can see, I uh, installed this uh, um, path from stones and all sorts of slates, which I could salvage from uh, whichever places, wherever I can get them. And when people come in through this area, they have to slow down because they have to go around this hosta. Originally, I wanted to move this hosta and make the area straight, you know, the path straight. But then I thought to myself, no, let's, let's walk around. Let's make this little wandering space. And literally, look at the space. It's a very short uh, walk but because there are a lot of interesting things here growing from this side eventually there would be yew hedge and this mass of green would be very appealing here and on this side we have uh, beautiful peonies which are uh, wonderful things during all year they create a nice green um, uh, canopy here. Also, we have uh, interesting big hostas here, which are ready to blossom soon. Boxwoods, boxwoods, they will grow probably to this height and will take this area under our uh, library window. So the passage through this area uh, is quite interesting. It's not straight and it's coming to, again, another clear exit between uh, the yew and abovitis. So these two shrubs frame the exit into our front yard. So clearly we have another room with clear uh, entrance and exits and it has a quite a different uh, character from the previous room. And also the front of my garden looks so much different. So this is a con concept of garden rooms. And this approach to gardening can be applied by people who are standing in front of this empty lot and they have no idea what to do with it. My advice to those folks who are hesitant, and I can understand that, would be to sit down at the table, take a piece of paper and write down which rooms they would love to have in their garden. A barbecue room, a room to entertain guests, a room for children to play, a room to raise wonderful fruits and vegetables and all that stuff. David Austin Rose's room. 
and then look at this space and start putting those names somewhere where you want them to be. And that's the beginning of your design. This way at least you're not intimidated and you're not waiting year after year for inspiration to come and meanwhile your garden is doing nothing. Now, very important other point which I want to stress is when you want the space to feel bigger you have to hide the boundaries and in our gardens you have to hide the boundaries between you and your neighbors especially corners very often when I visit some um, gardens and I see this dead 90 degree corner and the owners just put a fence there they look so dead and those spaces look so unattractive so the best advice I can give uh, those owners if they have a fence there try to create some sort of a layered effect using is a trellis uh, put a trellis in front of that fence uh, plant some climbing um, vine on that fence, plant some shrubs in front of that uh, climbing vine. This way our eye will get confused by looking at all the different textures and sizes and depths and our eye will not be able to perceive where the border is, where that garden ends. So for example there are two corners which I'm going to show you in my garden. We will analyze those and I will show you how we solve the problem of two corners in my backyard. Come with me and I will talk about that corner right now. So here we are, 90 degree dead corner. And when we moved into this house, probably you know from my previous videos, these beautiful, beautiful abovites did not exist. There was an ugly link fence behind them. There were little low growing hostas and all this corner was empty. And by the way, this all didn't exist. The land was straight going in and there was, I believe, only grass there. So what we did, you see behind the bark of this beautiful tree, there are shrubberies growing there. Somebody, our good friends, was throwing three rows of Sharon's. And you know, rows of Sharon's are so dependable. They're not quick to wake up in the middle of spring, but otherwise they don't suffer from any diseases. So what I did, I put three rows of Sharon's behind the trunk of this tree and they're doing very well there. And mind you, they are an excellent green cover, green back drop to underline the beauty of the trunk of this tree. Now, what made this corner even more interesting? We very slowly, we raised the level of the soil here. And I would not advise you to do it very quickly if you want to do it near the root system of your tree. Because trees really don't like when you put a new level of soil on their established roots. I see so many times beautiful dogwoods and uh, um, other ornamental trees, uh, weeping uh, cherries, blossoming cherries. Uh, they have their, you know, their landscaped uh, designs there and they have a heap of uh, mulch around their trunks freshly established and I know that in several years the bark around that contact with mulch will start failing and she might even die because trees don't like extra stuff on their roots once the tree is already established. So what we did we very slowly raised this level of soil here uh, in probably in the, in the stretch of several years and then I built this uh, wall here and by the way look at these stones these are my new my newfound treasures somebody on my street was throwing stones away so I said let me help you instead of you throwing it into you know bring it away I will just take it and I'm going to rebuild this wall and I will build it right here on that side I ran out of stones when I was building this wall so now I have some of them some of them to at least start that wall there and meanwhile these stones are favorite places for chipmunks to hang out. But back to our corner. So as a result, when we look at this corner, we don't see a corner. We see the beautiful bark of the tree. We see a beautiful green drop at the back. We see azalea growing in the front. We see beautiful color, chartreuse color here. We see hostas here, stones. Um, sometimes we see chipmunk here on this stone, happily eating uh, a nut. 
and our eye gets so busy that our eye doesn't even notice the corner. By the way, do you know that this is the other corner of my property where there is 90 degree angle and it is securely hidden by our holly tree, which by now is becoming very mature, very big, is occupying somewhat a lot of space, which I'm not really happy about. But you know what? I found a way out of it. This is my hiding place because uh, holly is covering a lot of ground with its um, um, branches, lower branches, and we never raise the canopy of that holly. So you know what goes there? My compost bags. And by the way, here's the link how I do compost. The best thing you can do for you and your garden. There's so much stuff we throw away, we can compost it and that would be the best gift for our garden. So all my bags go there and nobody can see it since I don't have um, a designated special garden room for my compost since my garden is so small, so I have to compromise. And this corner is a hiding place. So that's a way to hide your corner. So we went through two principles, how to manipulate space. Make space um, filled with a lot of interesting details and divide space into clear rooms. Hide the boundaries. And by the way, in the previous video of this series about how to design a garden, I focused on privacy, how to make the garden more private. You're welcome to check it also, it's right here. Now, what else can make our space feel bigger? Of course color and we know uh, it when we put something darker we look slimmer so the same applies to our spaces in the garden for example come and look here here you see that you and I already I talked in my previous videos about it but that you brings the space deeper it just disappears at the end and nobody knows that there is a fence and behind that fence is our, our, our neighbors so warmer colors bring space closer to you darker colors kind of disappear in the distance and you kind of don't notice them they appear further away so this was a very happy coincidence that the previous owners put it uh, you here and uh, we just let it grow, let it mature in its wonderful untrimmed uh, uh, state. We just trim it on this side and as a result it is a wonderful color for the background to highlight the colors of uh, uh, this uh, pergola butterfly bush on one side, the light color of roses on another side, and as a result, I think, the space is perceived as bigger. So when you have, uh, when you want to use color in your garden, oh, the butterfly, use warmer colors closer to the area where you're going to observe them, and darker colors use at the end of your property. How about making garden more interesting, more engaging? Well, the first idea, the first suggestion which I will give you is you have to make the garden your own. Your garden has to have your personality in it, meaning you can't just uh, pick up the phone, call the landscape company and say, okay, you're going to come uh, once a week, cut my grass, take care after my shrubs and my landscape is all done. Well, let me tell you, your landscape will look the same as 100 other landscapes on all other streets around you. But if you want to have a character in your garden, if you want your garden to be your own, you have to take care at least of some portion of your garden. And um, believe it or not, it's not as difficult. It's just you have to devote uh, to your garden maybe half an hour every day, uh, meet your weeds, for 10 minutes a day and they wouldn't be conquering your garden. It's so much easier to do little tasks here and there in the garden while you're doing your morning stroll. And then you don't have this, um, you wouldn't run into this monumental task of, oh my gosh, now I have to weed all this area and how I'm going to do it, I don't have time. So you in the garden will make the garden so much more interesting. Little details make garden also very interesting. And some people overdo it with, uh, I call it chachkas, garden chachkas. So be careful. Uh, use garden decorations sparingly. For example, here we have our uh, bird bath. 
I uh, decided to put stones around it because we have a lot of water spilling and I think it looks very organic and very nice here and I wouldn't do anything else here here we have another decorational element right here we have this old uh, birdhouse no birds there because it looks quite old and the opening is very uh, big but I think it looks very well there so that's another little quiet decorational element and I would advise you to stay away from um, plastic and bright uh, fabric colors uh, go for something natural something made out of wood something which will age in your garden and will look always good bird houses are very nice and there are so many cute versions of them so all these things make garden interesting now another thing which i wanted to talk about is to make garden interesting it has to be engaging there has to be a mystery in the garden you you want to go out and go and explore your garden what is there behind that hidden corner what is there which i don't see 100 percent i just see an alluring side of it and i'm dying to see what's going on there so the mystery of the garden is very important so when you go outside on your back porch and you see everything in front of your eyes I believe me you don't want to go to explore but when you go outside into a porch and you see that there is something behind the corner and not everything is visible to your eye you want to go and explore and very important even if the garden is a little bit like in my case you want to go for a walk in your garden I created this path and it is what it is 20 steps long and believe me it's nothing big but every morning when my daughter walks here i just stand there in the kitchen and i love it because i created something for her to enjoy at even like five ten seconds of peaceful walk it's a great thing to do so if you can engage into your garden by walking so creating some sort of a path where you can walk every morning that would be great too this way you can stop you can look at flowers you can look at different colors of uh, leaves texture foliage and that it, that can create a lot of pleasure uh, of enjoying your green spaces another thing which is uh, uh, making space more interesting and by the way bigger is strong vertical structure in the gardens our eyes perceive vertical structures as something bigger than they are and um, if garden has strong vertical bones garden automatically looks bigger and more interesting for example here we have arborvite is growing here we have vertical structure of uh, this construction which i built by the way here's a link how i did it yes i did it all by myself then we have arborvites here we have that a wattle fence right there on that side so my garden has a lot of vertical things going up and as a result you're so busy looking at all this that you forget that my garden is a fairly small size so the suggestion is vertical strong vertical constructions don't be afraid to go up in your garden and don't be afraid to borrow beautiful views from your neighbors if you have beautiful views they enlarge your garden too what you can do if you see some sort of an element there in your neighbor's garden you can repeat it in your garden this way you will connect it together and this way the, the space would be connected between that element in your neighbor's garden and yours so these are things which i wanted to talk to you about the garden how to make it visually bigger deeper wider and more interesting and more engaging let me know your thoughts under this video by the way big thank you to the cameraman my husband who is filming today thank you for watching please do subscribe to my uh, uh, to my channel my kids are calling me uh, youtube queen so your subscriptions and your likes are well appreciated happy gardening i will see you next time